I just drove four hours to come here because this Ikea had the item I was looking for for this extreme Ikea makeover. Last year around this time, I did my first ever extreme Ikea makeover, and a lot of you found my channel from that video, and I've wanted to tackle another Ikea flip. So for the last few months, I have been working on designing and putting together my next extreme Ikea makeover. I think this is going to work. Nice. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. This week I have another Ikea flip. And last year when I did my Calyx makeover, I wasn't really basing the end result on anything in particular, but this time around, I have a very specific piece I am trying to emulate. So you know the drill, let's get into it. Okay, right here I have the Tarva nightstand. I think I'm saying that right, but I really don't know. And the piece that I I am trying to turn this nightstand into is the Conrad cabinet from our house. I have been obsessed with this piece of furniture, the colors, the texture, basically just the overall vibe of this piece is everything. But there are a few things I don't like. One, really don't like the price. I can I can live without that. And the two sizes that this cabinet comes in, I really can't find a place in my house that either size would really work. But one thing I really do need is some nightstands for the guest bedroom that is down here in my basement. So I roughly designed out six steps to take this Tarva nightstand and turn it into the Conrad cabinet from our house, but the nightstand version. So this first step is pretty easy. I need to get rid of this drawer and make this bottom section a shelf. And getting rid of this drawer is the easy part. I just need to remove the drawers and then remove the track. But the shelf part is a little bit trickier. The easy version would be to just cut a board down to size that would fit in the space. And then there's two boards in here that would hold up the shelf. But that looked really bulky to me and it also limited limited the amount of space that's on the shelf. So what I'm gonna be doing is cutting the project board I got down to size so that it fits in between the two pieces that are in there and then using some pocket holes, I'm gonna screw that in place. So that first step was super easy. I was able to get really precise cuts using my table saw. So these boards are really nice and snug in here. And this next step is another easy one. The Tarva came with this brown hardboard for this bottom shelf, but I wanna add it back to the top shelf. But Lowe's only sells giant sheets of brown hardboard. So I got a small thin piece of plywood that I'm gonna cut down to size and nail it in place like I did the brown hardboard on the bottom. <gasps> Okay, the easy steps are now over. It is time to get a little bit more complicated. The Conrad cabinet has these very specific legs. So to give this nightstand a similar look to the Conrad, I knew I was gonna have to raise this up and add some longer, thinner legs. At first, I thought I was going to use these legs that I got from Lowe's, but these ended up being way too big and it didn't give me the right look. But on another trip to Lowe's, I stumbled across this. It is a spindle that you use for a railing. And I thought this would give me the perfect look. And because it's so long, I can cut this to as long or as short as I need it to be. But there were a few issues to consider. One, this square part right here isn't a perfect fit to completely replace the legs that came with the Tarva. And the legs that came with the Tarva have these really specific holes that are drilled into them so that it can actually attach to the piece. 
So what I'm gonna be doing is cutting down the leg of the tarva and cutting down the spindle and using some wood glue and a screw, I'm gonna attach the two pieces together to basically make a Franken leg. My month of obsessing over this design is really paying off. And now it's time to make some fluted doors. Like the legs, the doors on the Conrad have a very specific shape. And this part, instead of copying the R House piece exactly, I'm going to make just one door on each nightstand. And to make this really specific shape and to make sure that both doors are the same and also both sides of the door are the same, I'm going to take a page out of my sewing book and make a pattern. And my pattern is only going to be half the width of the door so that I can trace one side and then flip it over and trace the other side. So this door needs to be 16 and one fourth inch wide. So I'm going to make the pattern eight and one eighth. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to make the high part of the swoop start where the pine and the oak meet. And then I'm going to have it swoop down about three inches. Okay. Ba -dum, ba -dum. We're gonna measure down 17 and a half. And then on this side, measure down 20 and a half. And to make the curve, I was gonna use my French curve, but of course I can't find it. So we are freehand drawing this. Do you think that looks good? Okay, I now have a pattern. I'm going to quickly go outside and cut two pieces that are 20 and a half inches long and 16 and a fourth inches wide. Okay, we're back. And I don't know if you can tell by now, but it is really cold outside. So I'm gonna trace these patterns and then use my jigsaw to cut this out. And I really don't feel like going back outside, so I'm just gonna do the cuts in here. Okay, I have two identical doors, yay! It is now time to add the fluting. And I'm gonna be using the same chair rail trim that I used on the dresser that I flipped. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the dresser where I'm gonna cut everything longer than the door and then glue it all down. And once it's all dry, use my multi-tool to get a nice clean cut of all of the fluting. So I'm going to go do all that.
it is the next day. I let both doors sit overnight before I went and cut down the fluting because it started to get kind of late and I didn't want to rush cutting the fluting down and risk having some pieces fall off. So by letting it sit for a good 12 hours, everything was really nice and dry when I cut them all down. And I am super happy with how these doors turned out. I laid them directly on top of each other and they are exactly the same. So my pattern really worked out. Now it is time for the last hard step of this transformation, and that is painting and staining. Like the previous two steps, the Conrad cabinet has a really specific coloring and look to its finish. So last night when I was done gluing down all the fluting, I went ahead and I tested out a few different techniques and I think I landed on a technique that I like. The cabinet online is described as an antique hand-painted cabinet. So I basically used that as a jumping off point and I knew I was gonna have to use some black paint. But beyond that, the cabinet has all these colors and textures and a natural weatheredness to the finished look. So I went and got a whole bunch of different colored stains and using all of the different colored stains, I'm going to paint a bunch of different colors over each nightstand. And then once all the stain is dry, use some black paint and lightly brush black paint over the nightstands to hopefully give me that natural weatheredness that the Conrad cabinet has. Last year when I did my Calyx makeover, I was a little impatient, so I didn't stain the inside of the door and a lot of people were not happy about that. But this year, it's 2022, I'm a new Miley and I'm going to not be impatient and I'm gonna stain the inside of the door. Now I just have to let all of this sit and then I can go in with some black paint. Okay, I don't wanna to toot my own horn, but I think I kind of nailed the coloring. The technique that I was using where I would stipple the black paint on, let that sit for like 30 seconds to a minute and then brush over it, gave me almost an exact look that the R House piece has. But I'm not done with the coloring just yet. I really wanna pop these doors on so that I can see the whole piece together before I make my final adjustments. So I am going to move on to the sixth and final step, which is putting this all together. I'm going to pop these doors on, add the handles, and I'm really excited about the handles because I'm pretty sure I got an exact dupe of the handles that come on the R House piece. And once that's all done, I'll make any final adjustments with paint, maybe sanding down a few areas, add my top coat, and then show you guys the final result.
And that is it, guys. I am really pleased with how these nightstands turned out. All the colors and textures in this piece really gives me the same vibe that the Our House piece does. And I think these are gonna look really great in my guest bedroom. You know, once I get around to actually making it look nice. I hope you guys liked this video, and as always, thanks so much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye, guys.